Thank you for allowing me to present our experience in diagnosing galactosialidosis. I'm a salaried employee at Mayo Clinic. Today, I'll discuss our laboratory's process of urine oligosaccharide screening and data analysis. Since cases often add color and interest, I'll be highlighting two similar cases. Galactosialidosis is caused by the deficiency of a multifunctional enzyme called protective protein cathepsin A. PPCA forms a complex with beta-galactosidase and neuraminidase to break down oligosaccharides, which is essential for the functioning of both. When PPCA is inactive, so are these two enzymes. Clinically, all patients have manifestations typical of a lysosomal disorder. Three subtypes are recognized, though in reality the phenotype manifests as a spectrum ranging from severe to mildly progressive disease. Sialylated and galactosylated free oligosaccharides and glycopeptides accumulate in affected individuals and can be detected in the urine. Case number one is a seven-week-old male identified on ultrasound with ascites at 28 weeks gestation. He was delivered by repeat C-section and concern over the ascites. Routine testing did not identify a cause. He also had bilateral inguinal hernias and hydrocele's. Infectious workup and microarray were negative. He had a normal abdominal ultrasound. Skeletal survey revealed calcific stippling of calcanei and knee epiphyses bilaterally. The possibility of metabolic disease was raised. Though he was discharged home, but readmitted about one month later for fever and COVID-19 infection. A blood smear revealed some vacuolated lymphocytes. We received urine for oligo screening. About seven months later, a sample from an 11-day-old male arrived in our lab. This infant was born at 34 weeks gestation. During the pregnancy, an ultrasound was concerning for growth restriction, shortened long bones, and possible right diaphragmatic hernia. Findings at delivery included a small penis with hypospadias and an undescended left testes. Eye exam was age appropriate and unremarkable. Chest x-ray and ultrasound exams were consistent with right diaphragmatic eventration. Skeletal x-rays showed diffuse osteopenia and stippled epiphyses, suggestive of chondrodysplasia punctata. Serum concentrations of very long chain fatty acids were normal, including phytanic acid. Patient also had very elevated PTH. Histology of the placenta showed diffuse fine vacuolization of multiple cell types, suggestive of a storage disease. There are several methods to screen for oligosaccharides in the urine, the oldest of which is TLC and was used by our lab until we implemented MultiTOF in 2016. TLC has limited analytical specificity and sensitivity and provides no structural information for the oligosaccharides, which is often needed for diagnosis. It relies on subjective interpretation and as in the example to the right, is unable to distinguish between certain conditions. Other methods have been used, but each has drawbacks and limitations, either technically or in their ability to consistently detect the complete spectrum of free oligosaccharides. In 2013, Xia and colleagues published a high throughput method using MALDI-TOF-TOF -TOF mass spectrometry, which could identify specific urinary free oligosaccharides and glycoamino acids ranging from 300 to 4,000 molecular weight. Our lab modified the Xia method, which is outlined here in three steps. The two big differences include the choice of solid phase extraction columns that use less volume, and the replacement of the chloroform extraction step with acetic acid neutralization, speeding up the sample prep. The advantages of MALDI include a complete and accurate profiling of glycans over a wide mass range, and the peak intensities of interest can be exported and formatted as a CSV file for analysis by our bioinformatics software. This MALDI profile, characteristic for galactosialidosis, shows several typically prominent peaks, the primary peaks at 1532 and 2547, and similar peaks as identified. Interpreting a MALDI profile requires a great deal of expertise and familiarity with the conditions of interest. 
an initial set of steps and a flowchart were created as an assist in interpreting the profiles. Step one, look for large peaks greater than 1240 molecular weight. Depending on what you find, follow the associated guidance. Step two, evaluate the low intensity peaks and again, follow the associated guidance. Step number three, a normal profile may still show blood type or dietary influences such as human milk consumption. In a high volume lab, manually reviewing multiple profiles is time consuming and can result in increased turnaround time. This is where our bioinformatics software, CLEAR, helps out. CLEAR is a multivariate pattern recognition software and interactive web tool that offers post-analytical tools that are both objective and evidence-based. CLEAR is freely available to laboratories willing to share data and is easily accessible via internet connection. The peak intensities on the MALDI profile can be captured, exported, and formatted as a CSV file for analysis. The following steps illustrate this process. However, in simple terms, the sophisticated macros and formulas basically lasso the largest peak cluster for every molecular weight of interest, giving it a numeric value on a clear ready CSV file. An example of a one day workload is shown. We perform the assay for 21 patient samples in triplicate. After the data transfer and manipulations described earlier, the numerical values were assigned to the peak cluster areas of interest, yielding this file seen here. Shown in greater detail is one patient with data in triplicate. We have two covariates, age and sex, along with 60 oligosaccharide species with a specific mass range counting as a set of data. It is expected that there will be some variability between runs for each patient. Once in clear, select the oligosaccharides application and then the tool runner. Once selected, it brings up another page and shows the conditions for which CLEAR has an active pattern recognition tool. There are 23 conditions, two of which are CDG. This list encompasses the conditions for which we currently have enough data and cases to make a robust tool, and we expect it to expand in the future with other conditions. In addition to the 60 oligosaccharide species in the data set, CLEAR automatically calculates 1,430 ratios and simultaneously seeks a profile match to 1,490 disease ranges of the 23 conditions. The CSV file is uploaded by clicking the Select button and navigating on the server to the file location and choosing the correct file. Next, you run the selected tools. When this is done, CLEAR calculates 1,449 tool scores in about 10 seconds. A case is considered informative for a condition if it is informative in all three runs. If it is only informative in one or two runs, it is considered not a completely reliable result and discarded as a possibility. The tool runner report gives a listing of the informative hits for a run. It lists the case ID, the percentile rank, the name of the tool, and the guidelines. We stratify the likelihood of disease based on interquartiles, as the table in the upper right shows. In this file, there were many informative results from multiple patients, but K7 is illustrated. The sample was informative in all three replicates for the same five conditions, with galactosialidosis or GAL-C in the lowest ranking of the five. Replicate 2 was additionally informative for MPS4A, and replicate three for MPS4B. Because the condition of being informative in all three replicates is not met, these two possibilities are discarded. With five possibilities, what do we do next? There is additional functionality in CLEAR, so we start with the All Conditions tool. The All Conditions tool is a way to visualize all the disorders that have an informative score for a case according to percentile rank. Clicking on any of the diamonds will bring up the single condition tool for that disorder. Here we have the single condition tool for GAL-C listing the case score, the percentile rank, and the number of cases we have in our database. The right graph illustrates how this case ranks to all the known cases. 
and the bottom plot is the reference percentiles and disease range overlap plot showing our case values in black diamonds in comparison to reference range and informative markers. On this slide are the single condition tools for all five diseases side by side. You may be wondering how the tools are helpful since it appears we are still left with five possible conditions. It's important to note here that the primary function of the CLEAR software is pattern recognition to known cases. So the quality of our tools is directly dependent on the richness of known cases in the database and is why outcome data provided to labs is so important and critical for evolving clinical validation. In more detail, CLEAR now assesses the sample values against the reference percentiles and disease range overlap plot for consistency with each condition-specific disease range. There are three disorders where the sample values are abnormal, but more abnormal than is expected for the conditions, showing low consistency with these possibilities. On the other hand, you can see that the patient sample more closely matches the disease ranges of the two remaining conditions, gal -C and sialidosis, showing high consistency. Again, what do we do next? We can use another tool called the dual scatter plot to help us figure out the best fit between the two. Whenever there is a profile that is flagged for more than one condition, the software can auto-generate a dual scatter plot to answer the question, which one for any combination in your list of possible conditions. It does this by combining the single condition tools for any two conditions presented in a dual scatter plot, which clusters known cases based on the patterns in the informative markers. Along the slope are known cases for each condition. When the specific question for the unknown case is asked, the software answers gal -C. And here you can see the case score is solidly in the galactosialidosis quadrant, ruling out sialidosis. With sialidosis ruled out, we do the same for the remaining conditions. In each comparison, the software says, gal C is the best answer. Our case was informative for five conditions and narrowed down to one in less than a minute. The sequential application of CLEAR provided an unequivocal biochemical diagnosis of galactosialidosis. A final visual review of the profiles is performed by a laboratory director to assess the trueness of the result. Experience of the reviewer is very important to this process, and in this case, the interpretation by CLEAR and the lab director were consistent. So back to our cases. In both, our result pointed to galactosialidosis. Both were confirmed biochemically and or molecularly. At 15 months of age, child number one was exceeding the provider's expectations. Clinical features of galactosialidosis were becoming more apparent, particularly in his developmental delay and skeletal involvement, but he had not lost any developmental skills. He continues his therapies. At 25 days of age, child number two suffered worsening respiratory status developed multi-organ failure, and died. As a side note, this case is reviewed in more detail by Dr. Wilson in poster number 47 at this meeting. In summary, galactosialidosis may be indistinguishable from other early onset LSDs. Previous diagnostic methods were limited and unable to identify the whole spectrum of urinary free oligosaccharides. But MALDI-TOF MS profiling along with post-analytical interpretation using CLEAR permits the rapid and reliable diagnosis of galactosialidosis, multiple LSDs, and two known CDG. I'd like to thank clinicians Dr. Rizzo and Dr. Wilson for allowing me to showcase these two patients. It's been said that the Biochemical Genetics Lab at Mayo Clinic works best as a team. So I'd like to thank the whole team for making this work possible. I'd like to thank the individuals listed here for their commitment to excellence and quality improvement and for always putting the needs of the patient first. I'll take any questions.